Hey yo, hey yo, this is Mr. 500 again, doing it big. And we're gonna do it real big today with one of my favorites right here. One of my real favorites, the Rombus, all right? The Rombus is one of those cra crazy, 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 crazy quadrilaterals. That's kind of like a parallelogram. Well, it's not kind of, it is a parallelogram. It's a special type parallelogram, but it's kind of like a square because all sides are congruent. That's one of the beautiful things about a rhombus. Let me go ahead and just write it down for you just in case you didn't know. All sides are congruent. That's one of the big keys you gotta take away from this. Remember, rhombus automatically has all the sides equal to each other. That's why it's kinda like a square. But unlike a square, a rhombus doesn't need to have 90 degree congruent angles. I mean, a square technically is a rhombus. A rhombus is basically a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel and opposite angles are congruent, but it doesn't necessarily need to have all angles at 90 degrees. Okay, this it's a square is a type of rhombus, but a rhombus like the one we see right here isn't a square. So remember that all sides are congruent, okay? Opposite angles are congruent, all right? So that's why it's kind of interesting right here. Opposite angles are congruent, all sides are congruent, okay? These are major, major things right here. And of course, opposite sides are parallel all right so these are some of the things that we got to know about a rhombus what makes a rhombus well these three things right here so let's get it started let's get it popping all right look technically there's really only one formula we really got to know when working with a rhombus at least with this calculators test and that's the area formula the area formula for a rhombus is half diagonal one times diagonal two. What do you mean by diagonal one, diagonal two? Well, I'll show you my pretty pink pen right here. Right here, from S to C, there's a diagonal, boom. That means opposite, you know, vertices are gonna be connected by a line. Of course, that line really doesn't exist here. That's why in our drawing it was dotted, but that's, we could label that as di diagonal one. All right, diagonal one right there. Now I'm gonna use another color right here. We're gonna use green, I guess. And we got this one right here. Now I don't hate on my line. I mean, I'm trying the best as I can. You know what I'm saying? And that one, we're gonna go ahead and call diagonal two. And those are diagonals. And basically we're gonna cut them in half. It's a pretty easy formula once you get the hang of it. So in this problem right here, our area, we're gonna go ahead and do, well, diagonal one, which in this case is gonna be SC. Let's go ahead and put 0 0.0044. And we're going to go ahead and multiply that bad boy, multiply that diagonal one by a diagonal two, which is going to be 0 0.0085. All right. Oh, okay. I know you can't see that. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit better right here. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and switch this and erase a little bit of this right here. Let me erase that. Let me make it a little bit smaller just so you guys can see it. Because I do know for a fact that I write kind of big. Especially when I didn't really notice that it wasn't fitting on the screen, right? So 0 0.0044, and we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.0085. All right, now what are we gonna do after that? We're gonna cut it in half, multiply it by one half or 0.5, or just divide it by two. So let's go ahead and set it up. Let's buzz it down on our calculator, all right? So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and hit 0 0.0044, enter 0 0.0085, multiply and two divide and honestly it's a pretty easy formula i mean that's pretty much it so we could go ahead and start putting our answer right here right here okay let me go ahead and move this a little bit so i can see a little bit better okay because you know i can't really see it right now but we're gonna see it really soon 1.87 times 10 to the negative fifth power all right and that's it simple as that all right let's take a look at another one okay i don't want to take too much of your time you know what i'm saying we're gonna go ahead and rock this. We're gonna hit this. 
and we're gonna make sure we can handle it all right let's go and take a look at another one right here all right so we got another rhombus we don't really need to go into all the specifics about this rhombus but once we got this rhombus right here we can go ahead and see that we're looking for the area once we got the area in our minds we got to write that formula down remember always write the formula down so we're gonna do diagonal one times diagonal two. Sorry about my D's, my D's look a little off, right? But you know what, it's all good. It's all good because you know what? Diagonal one, diagonal two, you get that in your brain. You don't have to mess around with this stuff. You can write your D's however you want. Capitalize them for all I care, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sorry, Mr. Delgado over here having a little fun and hopefully you're having fun too because you know we're doing some mad. We're working with the rhombus. So we're gonna go ahead and have 0.00185. Let's go ahead and multiply that by. What are you going to multiply it by? I got it. Good job. 0 0.00092. And after we multiply that, guess what we're going to cut it in half by? Well, we're not going to cut it in half by anything. We're just going to cut it in half. Or we divide by 2. All right. So we bust out our little calculator. 0 0.00185. Hit enter. 0 0.000. Remember. People make mistakes right here if they don't put the exact number of zeros, okay? So you gotta be very careful. We're gonna multiply it, hit two divide, and that's it. Honestly, we got ourselves a good answer here. It's gonna be 8.51 times 10 to the negative seven. Notice how I'm not even putting standard form. Because these right here, I mean, their numbers are so crazy. I don't even wanna mess with that. I don't wanna put six zeros in front of a eight and then put a decimal in front of that. That ain't gonna work for me. That's too much work. Let's not even worry about that stuff. Let's keep it going. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, we got another rhombus. Notice how, you know, they didn't put it in the top right corner. They put it in the bottom left corner as, as far as our diagonals go. But that's it. I mean, it's an easy formula. Area equals D1, D2, cut in half. Now, I've seen this formula written down a variety of ways. I've seen it written down like this. Or I've seen it written down like this. And it doesn't really matter what way you see it. I mean, of course, you, instead of putting one half, you can go ahead and put 0 0.5, right? Don't matter. It's, not, it's all means the same thing, but that's why you gotta learn that math. You gotta learn numeracy, and you gotta learn what these different, you know, these different methods of writing these fractions and, you know, dividing and, you know, 0 0.5, what they mean. But once you get that, I mean, this one is pretty easy, man. It's cake. You just substitute, you put the numbers in, and you get our answer out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do. 428 times, times what? 285, right? We multiply. And then at the end of the day, we're going to cut it in half by dividing by 2. All right? So let's go ahead and bust that out. 428, enter. 285, multiply, 2 divide. Now, this one I will write out because you know what? I like writing out these types of numbers right here. We got 6.10 times 10 to the 4th. Which is a little awkward right there, I mean, but you know what, if you know that man, you can go ahead and put 610000. And that's the correct standard notation, okay? Scientific notation is completely cool, so is standard notation. It's good to be able to know how to read those numbers, all right? Let's go ahead and look at the next one. So we're still looking for area. Notice this problem's a little different. They did not give us the dotted lines, or they didn't even draw the diagonals, but that doesn't matter to me. That doesn't matter to me because CD, which is right here, is still identified. It's right there. It's 1, 1, 1. And then we got this other line right here, AB, AB, it's right there. And we don't need to know that line, but we do need to know the measurement, which is 353. Now, what do we do? It don't change. It ain't changing on us here, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do that area and still do diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. And divide by two it's still the same thing okay easy formula if you understand the formula you're gonna get them right so 111 we're gonna enter that bad boy 353 multiply two divide and that's a cake answer 1.96 times 10 to the fourth or 19,600 easy 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 don't ever think you can't do this all right because math is easy work hard and you're gonna do it. All right, let's take a look at this next one. Again, we just looking for the area for this rhombus, okay? So we got ourselves D1, D2, divided by four. You gotta keep, gotta keep writing these formulas down. I ain't doing this for me, all right, ladies and gents? I'm doing this for you, because the more you see me do it, and the more you do it on your own paper, hey man, you're gonna get these right, 
and you're gonna memorize the formula when the time comes to show these people that you're competing against that you got what it takes to be the best. You know what I'm saying? Mr. 500 believes in you. Let's go ahead and make it happen. So our area formula right here, area, is gonna be 2050 or 2050. You know, that's how you really say it. Multiply by 4,100. And we're gonna get that number and just cut it straight in half. We just cut that bad boy in two pieces, all right? So 2050, we hit enter, 4,100, hit multiply, two divide, boom, we got ourselves a beautiful rhombus answer, 4.20 times 10 to the sixth. Or, if you already see that panel with that standard notation, you can go ahead and write 420 and then add those four zeros at the end. And you get yourself that correct standard notation. Hey, look, if your mind's able to see it, standard notation may be faster for you. But, you know, it all depends on the person, all right, ladies and gentlemen? So it's up to you. Now, this is the first problem. Oh, man, Mr. Delgado's real excited about this one right here. You know, he gets excited with these top... Woo! I get excited with these top problems. And hopefully you do, too. Because hopefully you already see what we're going to do. We're going to write that area formula. I don't go away. Why are we writing area formula? Well, as you can see right here, what do they got given to us? Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that bad thing. I didn't mean to do that. I went and bust out that. They gave us the what? They gave us that area. They gave us that area. I didn't mean to do that either, man. I just keep slipping. I keep slipping. My fingers keep slipping. My fingers just slipping. It's riding that little undo button, you know? But in any case, that's what we got now. Notice, though, I hope y'all notice this because I noticed this real quick. We're looking for one of the diagonals. We're looking for CB. We're looking from here to there. Wow, I've never seen myself draw that kind of line. That was a disgusting line. Let's go ahead and brush out that pretty pink. We're looking for him C to B. We're looking for one of those diagonals. Now, some people may be intimidated. Oh, you know what? I don't know how to do this. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But you know what? Dude, we don't get intimidated here. We work hard and we get these answers. And hopefully you get these answers too. So what we just do is substitute. We're going to go ahead and have... Well, you know what? Before we substitute, we're going to substitute after we rearrange this equation. You know what? Because, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of working with literal equations first and when working the steps. And really, the first thing we got to do is multiply both sides by 2. You multiply both sides by 2. Guess what happens with 2s when we start multiplying both sides by 2? And why would we multiply both sides by 2, Mr. Ogato? Well, we're going to isolate one of the diagonals. I'm going to isolate for D1 right here. We're going to isolate that. We're going to put that on one side of the equation. Instead of looking for the area, we ain't looking for no area. We're looking for the diagonal. So we got to cancel out these 2s. So now we're left with 2 times area equals to diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. That 2 got canceled out. Now we need to cancel one more thing out. Since I'm looking for one of the diagonals and we're multiplying our diagonals together, we're going to do the opposite. Divide both sides by diagonal 2. Guess what happens right there? Guess what happens? Well, guess what? These diagonals cancel out. They cancel out completely. And now we got ourselves a real nice, easy formula to go ahead and work with. We got 2 times our area. And then we're going to divide it by one of the diagonals. And that's going to give us the answer for the other diagonal. So if you know how to work forwards and backwards with mathematics, hey, it's all easy. It's all good. And we're going to make this stuff happen because mathematics is easy. Notice what our next step's going to be right here. We're going to go ahead and put 2 times 1.30 times 10 to the 6. Notice I'm substituting. we got to use that correct vocabulary because you never know when that vocabulary might help you be able to solve some problems. Not only help you, because sometimes it's not just about you. It's about how you can help other people. And if you could handle this calculator stuff, well, it's obvious. You know a little bit about math. And math's one of the hardest subjects to really explain to other people. And if you could understand it, you pick up some of my vocab, it's going to be your vocab. And Mr. 500 is going to help you make sure that you can help others. And nothing's wrong with that. Don't ever think anything's wrong with helping other people. Sometimes people think, oh, no, I don't want to look like the smart guy because you know what? People going to make fun of me. They ain't going to be making fun of you. They're going to be asking you for help. They're going to be bothering you a lot. Maybe you might start having, you know, too many people bother you. And, of course, that's a good problem to have. All right? That's a good problem. And you might not believe it right now, but I'm telling you from experience. It's a good problem to have because 
you know, you may not think of it this way right now, but later on in life, you might be wanting to help other people out. And this may be your way, all right, ladies and gentlemen? Well, anyways, let's go ahead and work out this problem. And let's see if we can find that diagonal one, all right? So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and hit two and it in my calculator because we're going to multiply it. Now, you don't have to hit the two first. You can hit that 1.30 times 10 to the six first, but I'm going to put that two in first because that's how I wrote it down and that's how I like to do it. 1.30 times 10, which is the E button. Remember, just in case you don't know, that E button right there, you see that E button right there? That E button, that's what we're gonna hit. E to the sixth power. That E means times 10. To the exponent of, and we got that six coming in. So we're gonna hit multiply, connect it, multiply, 2118, divide, boom, boom, call it a day. Guess what our other diagonals gotta be? One, two, three, zero. Or scientific style, 1.23 times 10, to the third. It's as easy as that. It's easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Working forwards, working backwards with that beautiful rhombus. Opposite sides are congruent. Actually, opposite sides are parallel. All the sides are congruent, and opposite angles are congruent. There's a lot of information here. There's a lot of good information, though. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. I'm teaching my geometry class, a 10th grade class, and we're working with the rhombuses right now. And that vocab that I just went over is what they're trying to learn right now in 10th grade. So if you can handle this problem, my oh my, you already ahead of the game. All right, let's take a look at this bad boy right here. This bad boy right here. So I got this area already, and we're going to use area is diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. That formula should be ingrained in your brain. So let's go ahead and undo it. We multiply both sides by 2, right? What happens to my 2s? They cancel. Instead of multiplying by diagonal 2, let's go ahead and divide by diagonal 2. Well, guess what happens to that diagonal 2 on the right side? Oh, you know it. They cancel out two. So we got two times the area over diagonal two gives us diagonal one. It's easy as that. That's how you work backwards. That's how you make a count. And we're going to make a count today. So we're going to go ahead and, you know what, I'll do that substitution. I'll do that substitution so we can see it. We can see that substitution because, you know, nothing's wrong with seeing the substitution. We're going to go ahead and substitute two parentheses 0 0.212. And parentheses. Divide that bad boy by 0 0.575. We find in the quotient of the answer of the product of 2 and 0 0.212 thousandths. Find that product and we're dividing by quotient. And we're going to make quotient with 575 thousandths. All right? Once we put those together, we're going to end up with our answer for the first diagonal. The missing diagonal. In this case, they don't call it the missing they call it the other diagonal. Well, let's make it happen. Let's find that other one. So, we can start with two, enter. You don't have to hit zero point. Once you hit that decimal, it already puts the zero in front. But, you know, you could if you want to. So, hit multiply. So, I got 0.424 in my calculator right now. Hopefully, that's what you got. But we got one more step. We're going to get that 0.575. Hit divide. And now we got our answer. 7.37 times 10 to the negative first power. You wanna write in standard form? Let's do it. You don't have to put that zero in the front. You could just put 0 0.737. Or that zero helps us out, it helps us out. It really doesn't help us out, but I mean, it helps me out to know that how many whole numbers we got? A big old zero. How many wrong answers we gonna get on this test? A big old zero, you follow Mr. 500, this rhombus is gonna be a piece of cake. All right, let's make it happen. Next part, whoa, what is this? This is our first problem. We gotta worry, worry about that perimeter here. Hmm. Oh man, but the perimeter, that's a little different right here, man. I don't know if we could even do that, man. That perimeter means we gotta add all what? Sides, you got it, you got it. Well, one thing we know about these rhombuses, these rumba, it's like cactus. You don't really put cactuses I mean, you could, but you wouldn't be technically correct. I mean, people know what you're talking about, but you won't be technically correct. Cactus, plural, cacti. Rhombus, plural, rhomba. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Well, anyways, we could tell because we know all sides of a rhombus are congruent. All right? Man, I don't know how we're going to do this. How are we going to do this here? But you know what? I, I put those little lines right there to represent that all sides are congruent. So it's kind of like a square. We could get one side. We could get one side multiplied by four. Hmm. Huh. I wonder how we get that one side. Huh. 
<gasps> oh, lordy, lordy. I think I found something here. Hey, I wonder what these make right here. I wonder what these make right here. I wonder what this is. I wonder what this is right here. Well, I think I know what that is. I think I know what that is. It looks like these intersections of the diagonals make perpendicular lines. Two perpendicular lines. And you know what happens with perpendicular lines? 90 degree angle. That's our right triangle right here. I mean, I see a right triangle. You don't see it? You don't see it. Oh, well, you don't, you're not going to see it with that kind of line. You ain't going to see it with that kind of line right there. So let me go ahead and cut that thing out. Let's get that thing out of here. What about that one? Is that a little bit better for y'all? Is that a little bit better? Is that a little bit better? Hey, you know what we could do with right triangles? The Pythagorean Theorem. <laughs> yeah, boy. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And guess what? We could go ahead and figure out maybe, hey, we could figure out maybe how much that is and how much that, hey, you know what? They give us MC. They give us MC. They give us from here, M, all the way to here. I bet you we could just get this and cut it in half. You know, if we could do that, hmm. Maybe we could get that other diagonal by working backwards. And guess what we're going to do right there? You get that other diagonal and cut it in. Watch ya! Look karate chop action. Pow pow! Cut that bad boy in half, all right? So let's go ahead and do it. Maybe what we gotta do is work backwards, figure out that diagonal here, and after we figure out that diagonal, well, we can go ahead and start cutting that in half, all right? So let's do it. We got the area. It's gonna be diagonal one, diagonal two, divided by two. We're gonna multiply both sides by two? What happens? What happens? What happens? Uh, let me go ahead and undo that. I not like that two parentheses I drew. We're gonna multiply this side by two, all right? Two's canceled. We're gonna divide by diagonal two. That means we're gonna divide it on both sides. And now we can figure out that diagonal one. Now we could go ahead and figure out that bad boy. So let's go ahead and just rewrite the equation. But instead of writing the A's, instead of writing our variables, let's substitute. Our area is one, one, five, point, zero, three, five. We're gonna multiply that by two and we're gonna divide it by 9.757. And that's gonna give us our diagonal one. Now that doesn't mean we're done. We're not looking for diagonal one, but at least we're gonna have that so we can go ahead and put it in the next formula, all right? Because that next formula is gonna be that Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So 115.035, notice I started with the parentheses first. Don't matter, because we could do things out of order when we multiply. And now we're gonna go ahead and do two multiply. I got 2.30 times 10 to the second. And we're going to get that number divided by 9.757. Boom. I got 23.6 or 2.36 times 10 to the first. Now, some people, again, they want to write that thing down. Do not write it down. Don't even think about writing it down. You write it down, it ain't going to work out. You write 23.6, you write it down. That is not, that is not, listen to me, that is not the correct answer. Because you hit yellow show, you hit yellow show right here. Dude, there's a lot more than 0.6. It's not even 0.6. It's 23.57999385. And there's still more going after that. So it ain't going to be that. So don't write it down. Leave it in your calculator memory. I see it right there. You leave it there. So what do we need to do to figure out? I mean, we got ST. ST is now in the... ST, I got it. ST is right there. ST is right there. All right, we got it. But we didn't just we didn't just do that. We had to cut that in what? We had to cut it in what? We're gonna get it and cut it in. You got it. We're gonna cut it in half. And once we cut that in number in half, that number, we're gonna go ahead and be able to substitute it as one of the legs. Because that's our little patita right there. You remember? If you remember back to that Pythagorean theorem, little calculator's question, the legs are the dimensions that are touching that right angle. All right? Whatever's making that intersection of that 90 degree angle, those are the legs. And so that's gonna be one of them. So we can get that 23.6 number that's on our calculator, hit two divide, and then we're gonna do what? What are we gonna do? What's that Pythagorean formula tell us to do? What's it tell us to do? We're gonna do what? It's right here. We are gonna square it. So go ahead and square. We're squared right underneath square root. We're gonna hit blue, square it. Boom, we got it. So I see about 139 in my calculator, but that's only A squared. What's our B squared gonna be? Well, this is what we gotta do. We're gonna hit that 9.757. We're gonna hit enter because that's not the leg. 
That's the whole diagonal. And then we're gonna get two to five. Now I got 4.88. It's not point, it's not 4.88. There's a little bit more than that. But it's close enough. You know, don't write it down. Because that's what we're using our calculator. And then we're gonna square. We're gonna hit blue x squared we're gonna square it now some of you like to hit enter and then hit 2y dx hey that's fine with me because multiple ways to do the same thing but you better not write it down i'm gonna tell you that don't write it down so once we got that guess what we're gonna do we got the a squared my 1.39 times 10 to the second that's my number on top of my calculator you guys can see it hopefully you got the same thing here too okay my second number the one right underneath 2.38 times 10 to the first is my b squared and our formula says we're going to go ahead and add them, okay? We just got ourselves 1.63 times 10 to the second. That, my friends, is not the answer. That's only C squared. We got one more step. I heard you. Let's see. Let me hear you. That's right. We're going to square root that bad boy. Boom. I get 12.8. That is one side of this rhombus. But remember what we said in the beginning? Why don't you tell me what we said in the beginning about rhombus? Oh, I heard you, and I, I, man, I, I think I'm impressed, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you better believe you're right. All sides are the same, just like a square. We're going to get that 1.28 times 10 to the first, or 12.8. We're going to hit four. We're going to hit that multiply button. We're going to write that answer right on the paper, because we just got ourselves a hard rhombus question. Correct. 5.10 times 10 to the first, or some of y'all already like to do that standard form, which I'm a fan of. 51.0. Hey, Mr. 500, he's in your corner. But we just got to make it happen, all right? We got to make it happen. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I see this problem. I'm already like, what the heck is this, man? This is a little bit out there. I don't know what this is. But you know what this is? You know what this really is? It's right there. It's three-quarter of a rhombus. So we're not going to find one area, one area. We're not going to find 100% of the area. Guess how much of the area we're gonna find? We're gonna find three quarters of that area, all right? We're gonna find three quarters of the area. So the area of this shape is very similar to what we had in the past. Our area formula is gonna change just a teensy weensy little bit, okay? That's why it's good to know fractions here, okay? Because you know how I said divided by two? I'm gonna set it up a little different just so we can see it in action. We still get that one half. We're going to multiply one half times D1 and D2, our two diagonals. But it's not just that now. It's actually going to be times three-fourths. Where did I get three-fourths from? Where did I get it from? Well, let me show you. I got it from right there, three-quarters. We got to know our fractions. And if you know a little bit of math, this piece of cake. We don't want the full area of Ramos. We only have three-fourths of it. So when they give us that area, they didn't give us a full area. They gave us three-fourths of it. And that's our math mind trying to figure these things out. And that's what you got to do. Now, if you know how to multiply fractions, this actually could be simplified real quick. Because we're going to do, I'll go ahead and write it over here. We're going to do three-fourths times one-half. Instead of working with two fractions, we can go ahead and work with one. Because we want to be able to cancel out this fraction right here. And how are we going to do it? Well... Well, first off, we multiply. 3 times 1 is 3, and 4 times 2 is 8. How do we multiply fractions? We multiply fractions moving straight uh, 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 across. But not that way. Da, 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 that way. That's right. We always go from left to right. Left to right. Left to right. Okay, sorry about that. I get a little excited when I start multiplying fractions, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and work with that now. We got 3 eighths. Hey, why would it be 3 eighths? Well, because we're cutting it in half. And that doesn't mean we're gonna go ahead and cut the four in half. What essentially it means is we're multiplying that denominator four by t -t -t two. That's why it turned into an eight. That's what it really means. So really our area formula can be simplified to notice how now I'm gonna combine this. It's gonna be three times diagonal one times diagonal two over eight, all right? You could write it like that. You know what? Some people, they freak out when they write it like that. They don't see where it came from. Well, I'll write it like this too. 3 eighths times diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. Both ways are correct. Now, did they give us one of the diagonals? I mean, you may think they did. 
But actually, they didn't. They only gave us one of the legs of the missing triangle that cut, got cut out of this. They only gave us one of the legs. But that really ain't the diagonal. So what are we going to do to this one to figure out the diagonal? To figure out the diagonal one, we're going to have to get that number right there and multiply it by 2. You could already see what I did. I multiplied it by 2. So we're going to have to get that number multiplied by 2 and use it. Before we do that, though, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and undo this nonsense that we see because we're going to solve for the other diagonal. So let's go ahead and set it up. First step we could do is divide both sides by D1. Well, or D2. You know, I've been doing D2 the whole time, so let's use D2. But does it really matter? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. So I'll go ahead and do D2. But you could put D1 the whole time. It doesn't matter because we're solving for one of the diagonals. That doesn't mean that the first diagonal, it could be whichever one you want. It's a beautiful thing about math. If you understand the math, it's a piece of cake. All right. So now we got this formula. We got area divided by D2 is now equal to 3 eighths D1. So we're getting close there. We're getting close. How do we eliminate a fraction? What's the opposite of a fraction? Hmm, fraction, hmm, opposite, hmm. Well, really, instead of multiplying, because right now we have 3 eighths times, right? You guys see the little time symbol? What we should do, what's the opposite of times? We're gonna divide by 3 eighths. But I hope you've seen this before. We cannot divide by a fraction. What we should really do is right here. We're going to get this 3 eighths times D1, and we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal. If you don't know how to spell it, I'll go ahead and spell it for you. Reciprocal. Some of you guys know it as keep it, change it, flip it. What we're going to do is flip that fraction because we got the opposite operation of division is multiplication right there. But if we do multiplication, guess what? We got to do that fraction. You got to flip it around town. Yeah, buddy. And see what happens here. This 8 and this 8 cancels out now. They're on opposite sides of the, of the fraction bar. And this 3 and this 3 cancel each other out. That's how we cancel out a, well, cancel out a fraction. But remember, what we just did right there is going to happen on the left side. We got area over D2. But what are we multiplying by? 8 thirds. Now, this is where I'm just going to combine it for you, okay? I hope you see it. That means that we're just getting our area, our numerator, multiplying by 8. And the denominator, too, well, we're just going to put a little 3 next to it. And that is our simplified formula. Our last formula, our final formula, the final form is 8a over 3 diagonal 2 equals diagonal 1. And now we can do this problem. It's going to be a piece of cake. And let's go ahead and set it up. All right, I'll do my little substitutions. Now, of course, I really don't have that much space, but I'll go ahead and move it to this side right there. So we're going to go ahead and write eight parentheses. We're going to put that area in there. Four, four, zero, eight, zero, eight. We're going to put that all over three times. What's our other diagonal? Well, we don't know, but we're going to go ahead and put in our calculator two times. 2711. These are all the steps because I like to write all my steps before we solve. Now, of course, some of y'all, you write your steps in your brain, you can think about it, you have your little chalkboard in your brain, and you're writing them down as you're doing them on the work. And that's cool. But me, I'm not like that. I like to write my steps. So let's go ahead and make it happen, okay? So our first step, we're going to go ahead and get 8, hit enter in our calculator. We're going to hit 440808. Hit that multiply button, you know what I'm saying? Multiply. All right, sorry, a little excited because we're doing a real hard problem here. I bet you this is from a state test. A state test or not, easy work. Easy cake. That's what. Now we're going to get that three, enter. We're going to get two, enter. Look, you, look, some of you already know the properties of multiplication. You could actually do things out of order. And if you want to hit multiply already, do it. But I'm going to do it just the way I wrote it, right? Now we're going to hit 2, 7, 1, 1, and then immediately connect multiply to the 2. All right, we got 5.42 times 10 to the 3rd. And you see that 3 that we already hit enter? It's above our 5.42 times 10 to the 3rd. How do we connect that? You hit another multiply. So I got 1.63 times 10 to the 4th. 
And guess what that 3.53 times 10 to the 6 on the top means? Well, that was our numerator. I hope you got what I got. My numerator's up there, and my denominator is right underneath it. And guess how we connect those two? We hit divide. And it's asking for what? What's it asking for? Our short diagonal. That's what it's asking for. And we got ourselves a good answer. 217. Now, of course, you may not believe me. You may be like, Mr. Delgado, I don't believe you. Well, there's a way that you can prove it's 217. You could work that area formula forwards. You could grab that 217 and you could go 217, enter. 2711, multiply. But you also gotta multiply by two, why? Because that 2711 is only half. It's only half of the full diagonal. So hit two again. But some of you are already gonna see. We're gonna cut it in half because that formula says cut it in half, so we're gonna divide by two. We're gonna multiply that by three because that's three fourths. We're gonna multiply by three and then divide it by four. Some of you would want to put 0 0.3, 0 0.4 because that's a good way to write that fraction. And guess what? You see 4.41 times 10 to the fifth. You hit yellow show. And well, we got something super close. I mean, it's not exact because I bet you it wasn't really 2.17. It was probably 216 and a little bit of extra change and around it to 217. But see, those are the things. You got to understand reasonableness. And in this case, the reasonableness checks out. It works. We got 217 as our answer. And of course, if you want to write in scientific notation, 2.17 times 10 to the second. Remember, this is a beautiful thing about math. You could always get your answers, you could always get your answers and substitute them in original formulas to see if they work going forwards. And in this case, it's not exact, but it's close enough. It's close enough because if we do, look, let me do it real quick again. I do eight enter, four, four, zero, eight, zero, eight, hit multiply, I hit three enter, two, multiply, two, seven, one, one, multiply, hit divide to connect it. If I hit yellow show, it wasn't really 2.17. I mean, you guys can see it right there. It was 2.16.79970 and all that other good stuff. And I bet you if we were a little bit more precise to hit 2.17, we hit all that other stuff in there and do the formula working forwards, I bet exactly it will come out to 40, uh, 440,808, okay? Look, I mean, I, I like this problem. I like this problem and I took my time to explain it. And as you can see, there's a lot of colors here because I like this problem. But at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, these, this, these problems are cake. If you understand the formula, if you understand a little bit of the algebra, if you understand what these things mean, if you understand, hey, yo, this problem is talking about three quarters, three quarters. So I'm going to have, well, you, you know, some people don't even think about it like three quarters. Some of people would have not put three fourths. Some people would have put one half. Not even one half. Let's be real. What have I been putting all day? What have I been putting all day? I've been putting D1, D2 divided by 2 and multiply that by maybe not 3 quarters. Maybe 0.75, right? And, and, and so forth. You can go ahead and work it backwards like this. It don't matter to me. You know what matters to me? You being the best, you understanding these problems on this test. And that's it for Mr. 500 here, okay? And hopefully you learn something because I always learn something when I'm working with y'all. I always learn how important it is to talk correctly, give you the good vocabulary, and have fun. Because that's how we do it, Mr. 500 style. You know what I'm saying? And I hope you have fun. So have a good day, and we'll see you next time, all right? Peace. Oh, this song is my jam!